everybody welcome back to my channel in today's video i'm gonna be showing you how i made this really beautiful royal blue silver and white wedding nail set so i'm starting off with my extra long coffin nail tips um i have no idea where i got these from i literally don't use them enough to repurchase so i've had them forever um i it is actually very rare that i get asked for coffin nowadays um if anything medium coffin length is more common but extra long coffin i have not been asked for an extra long coffin in i've only been asked for it like twice including the set for like in like the past two to three years which is insane so um i personally love extra long coffin it is one of my favorites but yeah i just have no idea where to tell you guys where i got these tips so i'm gonna find some that are like these and i'm going to put them in the description for you but I um, am making a wedding set, like I said, so I'm going to start off with this milky white color. Um, this is like an almost off-white though. It has almost like the tiniest little hint of pink, but it looks like a milky white when you look at it like with just a few layers. So it is perfect for what I'm doing. Um, this was a freestyle, so I had no idea what direction to go in. I did have a few inspo photos, but she did tell me that I can do my own spin on it and kind of just use the colors that she wanted. So I knew for sure that I wanted to make something really beautiful, really, uh, sparkly and timeless and like elegant. I didn't want to use any really big, big charms or anything like that, just because I didn't know what the overall vibe is for her wedding. So I didn't want to make it like too much you know what i mean so i'm gonna show you guys the inspo pictures that i had and then i will show you guys and you guys will see what i end up making and let me know what you guys think but i'm gonna put the inspo here so i the, these were like the three inspo pictures that she had sent me i was more so inspired by this one right here i felt like this one was giving really more wedding vibes just in my opinion so i really wanted to do something like that like really focus on the blue gems and like the background of the base color so i tried to get that same effect and then um instead of that type of 3d flower i really wanted to use these little roses that i had because i felt like they're giving more wedding like i don't know why but like these roses felt more elegant to me so i'm going ahead and doing the base color so this is actually a color from rajism on amazon i forgot the name of it off the top of my head but i will put it in the description for you guys i think it might be called barely pink though i'm not sure i'm gonna put it in the description um and then yeah so i'm going ahead and doing this color on all of the nails but you will see i kind of go back and forth on what i want to do because i end up not wanting to just leave them all this color i wanted to add a little bit more silver for her because i know she specifically wanted silver so i'm gonna go ahead and um change up the ring finger i think is the one i end up switching up but yeah i love the this color for the background and I am going to have to do like two to three coats of this. Even though the nails are going to be covered in gems, I still wanted it to not be so, so sheer. So that you don't really see the glue underneath the nail when you're putting the press-ons on. So I'm going ahead now with the second coat. And then I'm going to talk a little more in depth on my bling placement. And like kind of like what I think about when I do my bling freestyle. And I usually don't look at... Um, inspo when I do my bling freestyles. Or even if I'm doing any type of bling, I will just do it off the top of my head like I like to have fun with it so yeah here I am just doing this and then I'm gonna cure in between each layer of course and then I remembered that I had this really beautiful reflective silver glitter gel this one is from nails by dev it is so absolutely stunning I think it's called something with diamonds maybe dancing diamonds i'm not sure i will also put that in the description box but it is a beautiful silver glitter it is actually so stunning so i wanted to use this so after i did a coat of the glitter i really liked the way it looked but i felt like it was almost standing out a little bit too much so a really easy way to tone down any really bright glitter that you have that's a gel is to grab a very, very sheer color. It could be any sheer color at all. And to just do a very, very thin layer on top of the glitter. And it almost just tones it down a little bit and leaves you with like a really subtle shimmer that is the color of the glitter that you used. So as you can see, it looks like a really, really subtle silver 
uh, shimmer color underneath now. And then I also did it right here on the pointer finger because I thought I wanted to do the two nails like this. But later on I go back and remove this nail and I end up redoing it because I just did not, the way, did not like the way the silver was looking specifically. I don't know why. I don't know what it was but I just did not like it. So I ended up taking that one off and just leaving the ring finger with the glitter. But um, yeah, so here I am doing a very, very sheer color of the same color I used on the base over to the top of the glitter. So here, um, I don't know why it was cut off, but I did go in and add another silver glitter on top of this. Um, I, th I think I added one from Ina Couture, but it was just an even more silver. So I added that and then I, I did like the way this looked because I realized that I was going to cover it with uh, rhinestone clusters. So... I didn't want to do another cluster to cover up the majority of the silver on the pointer finger. That's why I end up taking the pointer finger off and do, redoing it. But um, here I am applying the crystals. So I really wanted to do kind of like a really beautiful cluster nail for this. Um, so I went ahead and grabbed some crystals. I grabbed some Swarovski crystals. And then I grabbed some of these regular blue crystals as well. Blue was the main color that I needed to use. So I really wanted to make the blue crystals stand out. And then as you can see, I decided to go in with the white rose. This is the white rose flower that I was talking to you guys about. Um, I felt like this looked way more like wedding vibes. So I went ahead and used this. And then here I am kind of choosing crystals. Um, trying to see which ones I want to go in with. I think all the like clear or like silver crystals I use those are Swarovski the SS ones and then the blue ones are not Swarovski so here I am just going in with some different ones but they are still glass crystals they are very beautiful and sparkly so here I am applying another Swarovski and then now I'm going in with another regular blue one these um I needed to use these tiny blue ones because I have this like little mixed pack I really love these actually and I will put them in the description box they are actually really nice quality crystals. They are sparkly and they're very affordable. So they're really good for any type of set where you need multiple colors of stones. And you don't want to go out and buy like individual bags of each size of SS colored stone. So I bought these in like a bunch of colors. I have them in like this color. I have um, like yellow, orange, red, those type because it comes with the six sizes. So it's like really, really convenient for when you end up needing them like last minute. So that you don't have to buy a bunch of different sizes individually. So now I'm going in with more glue and I am using my McCart rhinestone gel for this. And then I'm going in with more stones here. So I decided to go in with this really pretty heart charm because her inspo pictures that she sent me did have some charms. I didn't want to use the really big, big charms just because I felt like, um, like I was kind of like thinking about her in a sense. You know what I mean? Like I didn't want her to have big charms that were going to be getting caught on her dress all night or all day whenever her wedding was or you know anything obviously I just don't know what her dress looks like or anything but just in case I wanted her to have charms that are going to be secure and that aren't going to be getting caught in her hair because imagine like a nightmare like she goes to like touch her hair and like her charm gets caught and then messes up her hairdo like you know what I mean I was thinking about all of that so I really wanted to make sure I used charms and stones that were going to lay flat that I could like basically put glue around so that they don't get caught on anything. So even though one of the pictures she sent me had very big charms, I did not want to use those for that reason. So I'm going ahead here and using this really pretty silver heart just so that it can kind of tie into the charms that she had probably wanted. But um, it's just more a little smaller and won't get caught on anything. So here I am doing the same thing for the other ring finger. Um, whenever you want to do any type of cluster like rhinestone design, always think out of the box grab any charms that you could use you could do this with absolutely any color any type of design you could do like a summer design with some really cute flower charms that are like different and colorful like pink yellow orange um you can come up with so many ideas and always make sure you have like a little mix of stones that are flatback shapes like this one right here i think is called marquise i'm not sure if that's how you say it but i also use the pear shape ones and then you want to have a variety of the ss stones so like ss8 ss10 ss12 ss4 5 6 you want to have all of those sizes because um whenever you're doing a really whenever you want to do a really pretty stone placement you want to make sure that you have those crystals on hand so that you could create like really pretty unique designs that look like you put a lot of effort in that are very thought out you know what i mean so that's why i mentioned that these little mixed rhinestones that's why I mentioned that these little uh, mixed rhinestones are very, very good for doing any type of rhinestone placement, rhinestone design, things like that. So 
you can see here that I'm grabbing a variety of different sizes, kind of just going back and forth, trying to see where I could fit more. Like, like you could see underneath the rows, I wanted to fit like a certain color. Um, I also made it like an effort. I also made it like, yeah, I made an effort to uh, put the stones in like alternating patterns. I don't know if that makes sense. But like, for example, I didn't want to put two of the flat back uh, shape blue stones right next to each other for like I don't know how to explain it like I, I just can't explain it that well but like right here where I have the pair I did not want to put like another pair right there next to it you know what I mean I wanted to put another type of silver so that's why I went in with the silver heart and then that's why I went in with the big silver Swarovski uh, SS stone I think that's like an SS20 right on top of the pair if that makes sense so I really wanted the blue to like stand out in that way so that it doesn't look like so much blue. It has like a perfect mix of silver, blue, and then the white flower, which makes it stand out as well. So I hope that makes sense. Um, so I'm trying to explain myself a little bit better when I do any type of bling nails because I know it could get kind of like, not confusing, but it could be kind of um, intimidating. Like when you want to create a really pretty unique design and it's hard to like not resort in really simple or uh common type of rhinestone placements because it's hard for you to think of like a new one so i just kind of like to give you guys tips on how you could like upgrade your rhinestone placement and things you can do to um make your rhinestone placement better and you don't have to spend a bunch of money um if you want to use only swarovski you can use only swarovski but you could see here that i did a mix um and i didn't even charge the a customer for Swarovski. I just did this as a surprise for her. I don't know if she knows what Swarovskis are, but I didn't even tell her. I just did it because I know these sparkle so beautifully and I felt like for her wedding, like they needed to be special. So I wanted to use some Swarovskis, but I did a mix. So because I didn't have any blue Swarovskis, I didn't have any sh blue shapes. Um, I decided to just go in with the blue that I did have and they still look just as beautiful. You guys will see the finished product at the very end when I wipe off all my crystals and they look super sparkly. They are so stunning. So another tip I wanted to give you guys is like you can use a mix of charms that look uh, pretty with the rhinestone placement that you're doing. So you can see here on the thumb I added this really pretty silver charm. I didn't know if it was going to go but it was silver so it was still in the theme of what I needed to do. So I specifically wanted to add this one um, and it actually went so well with the rows on top. So you can see that I'm like connecting them in a way and I'm making the patterns different, pretty different, I guess you could say on every nail. So because on the ring finger, I did this like sideways kind of like cluster nail on the thumb. I did like going straight down and you can see I'm adding the tiny little blue stones here on in like the center, really making it look very like detailed and extravagant but still timeless still very elegant and still glam because i think that's what she wanted was like the glam aspect sorry if you guys keep hearing that noise there's like a can or something flying around outside in the wind but yeah so here i am again with the mccart rhinestone gel i'm applying a very good amount because with these charms you want to make sure that there is enough glue to where your charms are not going to come off and then i'm also going to show you guys after how i do secure the charms to make sure that they are going to stay on like it's very scary when like not scary but like heart drop like I guess heart wrenching no what's the word like when your stomach drops when you get like a message that their your client or customers rhinestones fell off like that is the worst and if that was to happen on her wedding I would like oh my gosh I'd be so mad at myself so I made sure to secure them as much as I could um but yeah so another thing is when you're using any type of glue gel that cures in the lamp I would recommend getting a little round brush just like the one I'm using here. It could be any brand. You can use absolutely any kind. It does not matter. Um, specifically an old one, like one that you don't really care about. And grab a little tiny bit of acetone and um, like you could clean up the, the crystals. Um, if you don't want to use acetone because you're worried about it like melting the glue, I totally understand that. I think I actually used alcohol. So use a little bit of alcohol or even just with the dry brush, you can just go around and smooth out the glue. That's what I'm doing right here so that it gives it the most seamless look and your gems are not um, covered in glue like all around the edges and it won't make your nails look all lumpy if you know what I mean. So another thing is if you're going to use the McCart Rhinestone Gel, make sure to um, cure it after every nail because the Rhinestone Gel 
does run like it does get a little runny and your rhinestones will slide all around so make sure you are curing in case you guys are new to doing rhinestones or if you guys didn't know just it'll really help you guys out so that you're not struggling so much and then here on the pointer finger i wanted to do another type of little sideways swirl type of design so i grabbed this really beautiful pear-shaped stone um, I think this one might be a Serenity crystal. I have so many crystals that I can't remember exactly. But um, I do get all of my Swarovskis and Serenity stones. If you guys didn't know, Serenity stones are like identical to Swarovski. They are so beautiful and so sparkly. Those are the ones that I have been using recently. Any Swarovskis that I had are Swarovskis I've had for a long time already, like years. So um, I get all my crystals that are Swarovski and Serenity from Blue Street Crystals. They are so beautiful and you can get them in little smaller packs if you want to start building your collection slowly and you don't have to pay so 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 much money up front so um yeah you can like get your collection started little by little by little and then only use your Swarovskis for special occasions you you guys do not need to use your Swarovskis for every single set like every single customer you don't have to do that like if you are going to do that make sure you're charging for the Swarovskis they are expensive crystals because they are such good quality quality so um yeah i use a, i do a mix of stones sometimes sometimes i don't even use swarovski and you would never be able to tell because they're that beautiful so here i am just going in with the rhinestone placement and then i like to alternate to the other side for the other hand so you could see the other hand i was just doing was going to the left now this one's going to start on the right if that makes sense and then i'm doing like the silver pair and then the blue stone another silver and then another blue stone and you can see as I work, I am smoothing out around the stones. Smoothing it around the outside is going to help you also secure the stones so that you can kind of like smooth the glue out around and it'll create kind of like a suction, like a barrier around all the crystals. You can even do the smoothing out with like a thin liner brush. You don't have to do it with like the flat rounded brush that I use. You can use any kind of brush you want. Like it could be liner, it could be a round brush, whatever. And then here I am um, applying more crystals here in the empty spaces, doing a, using a different variety of crystals, small, big, medium, is going to make your design look way more intricate and way more detailed and just like really, really beautiful. So uh, that's what I use. That's what I do for my crystal placement. And then here I am kind of going down the nail. And I do like to leave myself a little gap at the bottom because if you guys watch my channel, you know that I uh, do file my nails at the very end of every single set once I'm completely finished. So I don't put my crystals all the way down to the very bottom because if I did that, I would end up filing some of the crystal off. So you wanna make sure that you leave yourself a little bit of room uh, if you are gonna file at the end. So that's what I do. And then here I am, I added a blue stone and right underneath is the Swarovski right here on the middle finger. And then I added this big stone after that. So you could see like the blue stone next to the Swarovski. They look almost identical. Like the blue stone literally looks like it's the Swarovski. So that just goes to show that beautiful crystals do not have to be expensive. And you do not have to build your collection solely on expensive crystals. Like you could, you could start with your collection of expensive crystals little by little by little. And only use them for special occasions. Or if somebody specifically requests Swarovski. Or use them for yourself. Like treat yourself to good pretty crystals. You know what I mean? Um, personally, if I ever do crystals on myself, I use, um, Swarovski. So yeah, I like using them for myself. And then I like to have them on hand in case anybody specifically asks for them, which I have had happen a few times where people specifically only want pure Swarovski on all of the nails. So yeah, here I am going in with the same design again on the other middle finger. And yeah, I'm kind of going down the nail, just like how I did on the thumb so that it looks kind of cohesive in that way. So for this really, really big crystal, I'm making sure that I apply a lot of glue and um, just making sure that I have it all secure. And then I'm adding a pair right here on the bottom, going this way, just like the, I had it on the thumb as well. And then applying tiny stones right here in the little corners. And yeah, so that's kind of like all my rhinestone tips that I have. And I really, really love the way it's looking. I always make sure to go back and adjust multiple, multiple times before I put it into cure. Like I make sure it looks perfect because it happened to me multiple times where I will like look away for a quick second and my rhinestones will be already like sliding to the side and then I'll accidentally put it into cure 
and I won't even realize like th that the crystal slid over to the side until I take it out of the lamp and it's already done curing and that is like the worst because like I don't know if like the customer would notice or the person who's getting the nails would notice but I notice like and it absolutely drives me insane and I have to redo the whole nail so don't let that happen to you always make sure that you cure your nail after right away after you have it in the exact spot you want it to be like all your rhinestones so here i am again on the pinky because the pinky's smaller i like to usually do just like a little bit more of a simplized design i generally generally do not like applying big charms on the pinkies just because i don't know i feel like pinkies are more delicate and i feel like the charms look better like on the center nails so i like making the pinky a little bit more like a just simple accent nail so you can see here i'm not doing the bling as extravagant as i did on the other ones where i added big stones and big charms so I'm still making it look beautiful by adding a mix of stones, but I'm not going overboard with the big, big crystals. Um, of course, unless somebody asks me for it, I will, of course, do whatever they ask. But this is just for like my freestyles. I notice that I generally tend to do this all the time for freestyles. So yeah, here I am again doing the other pinky. Um, and yeah, so the other thing is if you're going to use a type of crystal gel that cures like not with the lamp, like Zule glue you're not going to be able to go in and wipe the edges away um, because the glue will literally get stuck and dry into your brush. So when you're using Zule glue, that's where it gets kind of more, a little more tricky. You kind of got, got, to, you kind of have to be more mindful of where you apply the glue if you're going to use that type of crystal gel. So if you use a gel that cures on the lamp, you have a little bit more freedom. You have a little bit more, um, like space and um not space what is it called you have a little bit more like i don't know i can't think of the word you guys my mind is blinking but basically you have a little bit more of um i don't know i can't even think of it <laughs> i don't know why i can't think of it you guys but you basically have more time to move it around i guess and then um you could clean up the sides and things like that but if you're going to use Zule glue, which I think is the best glue, like it's like so good, like you don't have to worry about your stones falling off. If anything, they're going to be too stuck on, but you don't have enough time. Like it dries super fast and then you can't clean it up. And then sometimes it creates like a white cast, even though you do use the nail glue dryer. So yeah, just keep be mindful of that in case you guys are new to using the Zule glue or any type of other glue that is not the kind that dries on the UV lamp. Um, but yeah, sorry you guys. Sorry that I blinked out for a second. Um, but now all my crystals are all the way cured and now I'm going in with my top coat to make it nice and glossy. I'm going in with my Beatles gel top coat and I am just uh, going all around the crystals as carefully as I could. I do not try to be so so careful with the tiny tiny little stones. Honestly if you get gel on those it does not matter like you're not going to notice either way. Um, you guys will see my finished result at the very end after the crystals are all uh, wiped off and everything once everything's cured. The crystals look absolutely beautiful and sparkly like it doesn't even matter so don't worry too much about not getting it on the little stones you specifically do not want to get gel on the big stones like don't get gel on the big stones because they will look more like plasticky and because these are like quality glass crystals you want them to keep their sparkle so any bigger sizes any shapes anything like that do not top coat on them but if they're the tiny ones it does not matter like it literally doesn't so don't worry about it too much for those um, and then yeah here I am just going all around and then at the very end once I am done top coating all of the nails if I'm doing the whole hand and not going nail by nail right before I put it in the lamp I give it one last look and you can see here I went back to the thumb and did one last wipe I went back to the middle finger did one last wipe just to make sure I get any extra gel off the sides of the nails so that they are not like dripping off and like creating like a weird shape to the nail i hope that makes sense but now i'm doing the other hand kind of just going back and forth and just creating uh a seamless finish making sure that i'm not using too 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 much product and then of course you always get those annoying little pieces of lint i absolutely hate those especially when i'm doing like any type of like white nail design a really like light nude things like that even any type of nude like it's so annoying because you could see the little pieces of lint and i have to go back and like buff them out or redo the whole thing it's so annoying but yeah 
So here I am just going over like this. And then, yeah. So once I'm done, I like to make sure that it is fully cured by curing it multiple times in the lamp. Because I use a lot of McCart rhinestone gel, um, I like to make sure it's fully cured. And then another thing that I forgot to mention to you guys, if I know I'm going to be using big stones, like for example here on the middle finger, and I knew for a fact that I was going to use bigger stones and like these charms, so I didn't make the base color so, so opaque. Um, I basically made sure to like not make it super opaque because something that I've never told you guys is that I like to take the nails off of the stand and then put them in a little box, like a box that fits into my UV lamp. I use the Kiara Sky one, which I'm going to switch that soon. But anyway, that's not, that's not what I'm trying to say. Um, I put it into a little box. I flip them over so that the inside part of the nail is showing up facing the lamp. And I will let uh, the nails cure an extra 60 seconds like that with the nails flipped over. So that the crystals are drying from the inside as well. If that makes sense. Like underneath the nail. I would, I would put it in the lamp so that the underneath the nail gets the light as well. So that if there's any uncured gel at all underneath. It is cured with that extra uh, step. So if you're going to be using a lot of glue and using big crystals to where the lamp may not penetrate through all the way, always you could always do that. Like just do that specific nail a little bit more sheer if you could, if you're able to, and then go ahead and do that. Um, so that's an extra tip for you guys as well. And then here I am now um, going in with the extra glue that I need to go in around the bigger crystals. So you can see here I went back in with my glue and I applied more around the rose, making sure that it is extra secure. And I'm applying more glue here inside of the charm just to make sure it is also more secure. And then here I am switching the nail or sliding the nail off to the side a little bit so that I can get more glue in here underneath the rose. I do not want the rose to have any little crevices underneath where uh, her hair can get trapped or her clothes or anything like that. So I'm making sure to add glue around the edges like this. And then here is another easier way to do it. You can grab some glue, put it on your palette, and then grab a liner brush. Here I am grabbing a random brush that I had. I think it's like a Nails by Dev brush that I don't use a lot. Um, so it's just like this brush. And then I'm going ahead and uh, getting the glue. And now I'm going all around the edges as um, seamlessly as I can. So I don't get a whole bunch of like bulk of glue around the crystals. Like I want the crystals to be sealed, but I don't want them to like... I don't want the extra glue to like show, you know what I mean? So this is what I'm doing as an extra step to make sure the big crystals are fully secure. Um, the little crystals I have way more security in, like I have way more faith in those because I know I top coated around those tiny ones. But the big ones, sometimes the top coat is not enough and sometimes you want to go in with just a little extra glue around the stones just to make sure, especially when you're using the McCart Rhinestone Gel because sometimes McCart Rhinestone Gel wants to play and then you can't. It does not work the way it's supposed to work. So yeah, here I am just going around the crystals again, like I said. And yeah, I feel like I'm talking so much in this video, you guys. I'm sorry if I'm talking way too much, but I really wanted this to be a super in-depth like crystal placement video because I feel like it's been so long since I've give, given you guys like an actual in-depth like step by step of what I do and the way I think when I'm doing my bling sets. So yeah. Doing this again, going around all the shapes, like I said, around the pears, around the marquees, around all of these. I don't even know if they're called marquees, but yeah. <laughs> um, that is what I'm doing. And then I like to just go over every single nail and double check if there's any crevices that I could see. Because you can definitely tell like when there's a little spot that the glue didn't get underneath. Uh, so you want to just fill it with glue in those little spots. And then after I'm done with all that, I like to leave it in the lamp to cure. Like I said, after I'm done with all of this and I'm not going to put any more glue, I like to flip the nails over in a little box, take them off of the stand, and let them cure from the backside facing forward so that any glue underneath can penetrate through as well. Because when I flipped these nails over, they were a little see-through. So you could see the gems and the glue underneath a little bit. So I knew that the light could penetrate through that. And um, yeah, that just helped me out making sure that everything was very nice and sealed as much as it could be. Because, especially because these are just like, you know, for her wedding, like they cannot be, like, they can, the crystals cannot be coming off. So yeah, that's what I'm doing here. And you could also do like little glue, the glue that has a little needle tip. 
that's what I've been using as well lately. So you don't have to do like the whole liner brush and everything. But that's it for this set. After I filed, um, this is the finished result. As you can see, they are absolutely beautiful, absolutely stunning. They are the colors that she wanted, but they look absolutely elegant, timeless, and classy, but still super glam, which is what she wanted was the glam nails. And I absolutely love them. They are one of my favorites. I really hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. This was definitely a chatty one. If you enjoyed it, please don't forget to like. And if you haven't, please subscribe to my channel and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!